Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Today we continue the beat formulas right here at BusyWorksBeats.com. So I'm going to show you guys today a JPEG Mafia style approach. Uh, firstly, we're in Trillion. And if you don't know me, I'm game from BusyWorksBeats.com. We work with a million producers around the world. They've gone to work with Drake, Kanye West, Post Malone, Ariana Grande, French Montana, Young Thug, Polo G, Lil Baby, Trippy Red, J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, on and on. So we've trained over a million producers around the world. So here is... Um, in Trillion, there's a patch called Angry Baby Bass, and we're going to play the notes um, G sharp, uh, G sharp, G, and then C, which is the tonic. So let's find G sharp on my keyboard here. To use your typing keyboard, turn this icon on right here. We're at 126 BPM. We're going to right click, go to the root note C, layout piano. I'm in octave three to play bass notes. So it's going to go... So it's like one, two, one, two, one. It just kind of holds it. Now we're not trying to copy a song exactly. I think it's, I forget the name of the song, but it's one of the early tracks on the album. Okay, so we're just gonna repeat that. I'm gonna turn it down just cause I don't want it to like blow out my speak, my earphones. So let's turn it down for now. Um, so that sound is really, you know, the source of the sound, if you guys don't have Trillion, is basically a sine wave, and it's being bit crushed to turn into a square wave. And then that's running through some chorus and some amps here to kind of rev up the sound, but really it comes down to that bit crusher, quantizing, it's called the sine wave. That's how you get that, like, rattly sound. You could do that in Serum. Let me show you guys the Serum alternative. So let's say you guys can't afford that one. Uh, where we have serum. Let me show you a quick alternative. This won't be the exact sound because I don't have time to sit here in sound design. But for example, if we go to a sine wave, we can go to where it says quantize. And it, let's go down a couple octaves. Okay, so that's essentially what the sound is with some distortions on it, of course. So the more you go down, the more you quantize, the more the bit is redu reduced. So this is kind of close, but it's not the same exact sound. For this sound, you might detune it and maybe add a sine wave, maybe one octave lower. Something similar, but it's not the same exact sound. Maybe add, um, I ended up sound designing anyway. I'll give you guys this um, project files for free. If you go to busyworksbeats.com slash FL studio, I'll give you guys the project files. That's pretty much the sound though. So let's pull that back. And then you're just gonna drive the signal. Maybe through a low pass filter, give a little drive. Close, it's not the same exact sound. So that big crusher is a little bit different because it has a type sound to it. Okay, so there's some modulation going on with the quantize. Uh, last thing, let's say we want to do this. Let's uh, give that quantize ADK. So wherever it points is where it ends. So that's how you get that like laser. All right, so again, you guys got to tweak that sound. I'm going to take off that modulation, but you guys got to tweak the sound. This is not the exact sound. I'll just leave it there. You guys can kind of sound design around it. Okay, so ended up doing two minutes of sound design. So anyway, that's the bass. And then what we're going to do is we chopped up, uh, I think it's called Hoochie Mama or something like this. Let me, actually, let's do the music first, then we'll add the vocal chant. So right now I just chopped up a track called... My Camera Never Lies by Bucks Fizz. So I needed something like very pastel 80s, something that has a guitar, um, but lightweight. So it doesn't sound like hard rock, but just something like lightweight. Um, and what we're going to do is just play this chop by chop. So just kind of give it a groove. So don't worry about the key right now because they're not matching the scales. Let's turn the bass off. All right, 
so my finger missed a note, but whatever. We're just going to take the first two, chop those out. Let's hit Alt Q to quantize, and we need to fix one of these. Hit Control L. So we're leaving in the drums and everything, so that's that. Now we got to figure out what key the bass is in. Okay, so let's go to another plugin called Scalar 2. If you guys struggle with the key of things, look at Scalar 2. And let's go in here. So it's dun, dun. So we're in the key of C minor, okay? And we need to go to Serato, figure out what key we're in. So this is E minor. What we're gonna do is transpose it down to C minor. So that should match tonally. Now it's gonna be a little bit darker pitching it down that much. So instead of pitching the sample down, let's pitch it up. Plus 12 would be plus eight semitones. Now this is pretty far to stretch it. So now we need to match the rhythm of the sample to the actual uh, dun, dun, dun sound. Okay, so I'm looking for parts of the sample. We need like a dun. So because the sample is so rich in sound, I need to make sure, uh, where's our, let's do, let's get rid of this section. Again, let's hit control Q in this case, hit control L. Now what I might do is get rid of the bass so they don't clash with the bass. Yeah, we might get rid of the bass. So the bass is kind of part of the sound though, but let's turn off so this is going to eat up a lot of CPU. Uh, let me do this. Hold up, y'all. All right, so Serato is going to process, but it takes up a lot of CPU. So I'll run the buffer. Let's knock this down to 125. Okay, so the kick is going to follow that. I think the sample should be done by now. Let's pull our buffer back. All right. All right, so if you guys, the CPU is going crazy, turn your buffer length up. That might help. Uh, now let's add the kick. So the kick's going to follow that rhythm. So it's doom, 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 doom. Kick, 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 doom, doom. And then we'll side chain to get rid of some of that uh, mud. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. Kick, kick, one, two, three, four, five. Kick, 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 one, two, three, four, five. Kick, kick, one, two, three, four, five, two, three, kick, kick, kick. Okay, so it's, it's following the sample timing. Hit Alt Q. Now everything can't eat up that base area, so we're gonna have to like compromise with some side chain going on. But for now, we're just gonna turn the bass down. Something happened here with my rhythm. Let's figure out what happened. So also to it, the kick should be like one, two, three, see, yo. It should be like one, two, three, see, yo. Okay. Okay, so we did that pattern. Let's figure out what happened though with my kicks. I think this one's early. So that 
is coming in a little too early. So I like the chop, but instead of hitting that initially, let's add the F. That way it offsets it for like one hit. So it lines up better. It should line up better. Let's see. Oh, that's just not lining up. So I'm just going to leave it as is. But keep in mind that kick's not going to line up perfectly with the timing. So it goes like doo, doo, doo. Now what we could do actually, a better way to do this, we're going to let the sample be the thing that controls the groove here. I'm just going to go in manually and find where the kicks are, which is right here. And I believe right here, we're going to like grab everything, hit control shift to highlight multiple, hit alt, and then left click and nudge it to the left until it matches the time. So Dan, dun, dun, dun. let's figure out where the kick should be. is where do we put the kick it's kind of weird because there's no metronome i think let's just leave it as is because my brain is like trying to make sense of that timing so it should be dun, 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 boom 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 like that but then it goes into the okay maybe we just have too many kicks. okay that's what happens so we're gonna nudge them up a little bit Okay, so it's like a weird offset. Okay, now let's add the vocal chops. Now from here, I mean, we're pretty much done. Okay, so I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do. Okay, and then we're gonna do another part of the chop is. So it's two different with it, with it. So we're gonna do both. All right, so we could switch it up. But let's Kind of like that one, but I kind of want it to switch up. So I'm going to do the new with it, but then the old with it. I'm going to quantize everything, but I'm going to nudge some stuff to the left. So it sounds a little bit early. So it's not like with it, with it, with it. We're going to bring it a little bit earlier. Bring it in a little bit earlier just so it hits before the downbeat. I'm going to hit control L so that all the notes are fully drawn out. So I want the with it to be a little bit early. So I'm going to hit alt, pull all those to the left. Turn the bass back up. Now I need to side chain the kick to the bass just so they don't clash. I'm gonna add a fruity soft clipper. Pretty good on time. Funny enough, we did this in like 15 minutes. If I didn't do the whole sound design thing, we probably could have did this in 10 minutes. I might even cut out the sound design part because it ate up a lot of time. But anyhow, let's add the fruity soft clipper. And we need to find our kick. Find the bass right here. Right click, side chain to that track. Let's open up Fab Filter Pro Q3. Go to the settings here. Processing, right click, select your kick. Go to the front panel, make sure collision mode is on for the visual. And then we're gonna just find where the kick and the bass overlap, which is right here. And we are going to make it a dynamic cut. Go to auto and then hit this little up button so that it reads from the side chain. Now every time the kick hits, it will turn that bass down in that specific range so they don't overlap. Now we can push our kick a little bit harder. So to make the kick harder, we could run it through a standard clip plugin, which is about 25 bucks last time I bought it. 
All right, so I don't know, you know, what this could turn into in the future, but it's pretty affordable. So let's do this. We're going to saturate the kick. Okay, so one thing we also need to check is phase. So let's reverse the phase of the kick. So it's hard to hear the tone of the kick when that bass is just dominating all the frequencies. Let's get the kick tone first and then we'll bring the bass. This kick's kind of weird sounding to my ear. I think, oh, you know what I might have done? I think I recorded an octave lower, that's why. I was about to say, that kick sound is so weird. All right, so now we need to redo the frequencies. Here's something to off. Now we can push the kick into the soft clipper to get that extra tone. Is that the wave shaper? So again, there's a little time difference at the end. So what I might do to make this sample feel a little more sped up is find that first chop. Instead of letting it go like, big, it's like a lot of buildup. Let's just chop out some of the transient or some of the attack, I should say. I might try to line up this note right here. All right, so this needs to be a little more offset. I, think I had it the first time. I'm gonna filter out some of the sample just so it's not so aggressive. Let's add a bandpass filter. We're going to chop out the highs because it's a little bright. And so the 80s was very, very high frequency bass. Let's cut out the highs and let's chop out the lows like that. So this way it fits in the mix instead of just fighting. I'm going to go in and change up the basses so it's not repetitive.
Now I'm just debating on tone and octave. So I'm gonna make that with it with it chop last a little bit longer on the second half. So let's run this all the way through. Alright, so let's try to add some electric guitar. Now, as you guys can hear, my thing is like crackling. What I'll do is see if we can turn off some plugins. I don't think we can. So let's up the buffer length. And the way I'm gonna record this guitar is we're gonna find the key, which I believe is C minor. Uh, let's go back to Serato and double check. Yes, yeah, C minor. So we're gonna go to our root note, right click here, make it C. We're gonna go to minor pentatonic. And then we're going to go to octave four or five. I'm going to use this electric guitar. Just kind of improv with the track. Now, it's not going to sound like a super realistic guitar because I'm not playing it the exact way. But this is a very good guitar. So let's try out some of their amps. Let me see if turning off the plugins helps because it's hard for me to record to latency. So let me try to go back down and then turn off plugins instead. All right, so we're getting latency. So let's see if it's this chain real quick. Let's turn that off. It's only need really one plug in, which is the soft clip. Ah, dang. Hmm. So if you guys don't mind, I'm gonna like, the track is gonna have to crackle. Maybe if I turn off my vocals too.
we're just going to keep one of those. So we're going to keep one of those takes, even though it wasn't the greatest performance. Also, too, you want to look for like more of a lead guitar sound. I'm going to change out the amp. So for, for a metal sound, go left, but turn down the volume. This was supposed to be dumb. Also too, the mod wheel controls the vibrato. So to do this, we're gonna go in the top left of the plugin, drop down, go to browse parameter. We're gonna look for MIDI CC number one, which is the mod wheel. Right click, create an automation clip. And anytime I want vibrato, this plugin, uh, you know, the mod wheel triggers vibrato for this specific plugin. So anytime I want vibrato, we're gonna have to draw it in like this. So for long notes, I'm going to add vibrato. So I just need to be... Like this. So that was just me freestyling, but it sounds great. That part I'm probably gonna get rid of is too rhythmically off. To me, that sounds pretty fire. So I did this by accident, but it sounds cool. So I'm going to leave it as is. This part, I think, could do well somewhere in the mix somewhere. So it's not a waste. It's just in the wrong place. Now in the song I'm referencing, they have like rock drums for this track. I'm trying to think if we, do I even have a plugin? I might have like Easy Drummer or something like that. So I'll do that part uh, with Easy Drummer. I think most people are using Superior Drummer. It's like a $400 plugin though. I would definitely grab it, but it's just, you know, for, I already kind of have acoustic drums. So for this, we're just gonna create like a breakdown where it goes into an acoustic drum. <laughs> Maybe like right here. Let's swap out that kick and let's do some more acoustic stuff. And let's do. So to save time, we're just going to use their preset stuff. I'm not going to sit here and like program drums. Um, let's use pop rock basic kit. And then if you go to the browser, they have different rhythms here. Let's try pop rock. And then let's do. How does this work? Shuffle straight. So we want straight drums, pop rock, groove one. Let's just figure out what this is. So I don't know why it's like, okay. Let's grab this one. So I think we can drag the MIDI. Hold on. So let's drag the MIDI onto our track here. And that should line it up for us. So I'm just going to copy and paste because I'm, again, we don't really need a bunch of change ups. If anything, I'll just draw in a change up. We just need acoustic drums at this point. Now the syncopated hi-hat that is probably 
a little pop, but whatever. Let's see if we can grab a drum fill. So let's go to pattern 10. Let's use the same browser here and let's look for fills. And let's find. What we this one sounds crazy. So let's grab that. Just add it in. And now I'm just going to add this wherever it's on the last bar. And then we could like swat, you know, switch it up. Let's go to a new pattern. Let's go back to easy drummer and let's go to a different fill. That one's pretty cool too. Let's drag that in. So these are all different patterns and I'm just swapping out that last bar. Might be a little too much to do a drum fill right there. Let's hear this all the way through. I think we have all the element.
All right, I'm going to run this once through. this one guys this one's this one's it all right um you guys can get the project files for free go to busyworksbeats.com slash fl studio to get these project files for free oh wait i just realized you guys can't hear me <laughs> let me say it again so to get these project files for free go to busyworksbeats.com slash fl studio thank you guys for following the beat formula series right here at busyworksbeats.com subscribe if you're new like the video share with a friend peace